Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I figured it had been a while since I had did a get ready with me talk shit, super unplanned video, and so that's what we're doing today. I don't really know what we're gonna talk about in this video. I guess it'll be a bit of a life update, running my mouth, sure to get me in trouble type of video, but what's new? So I'm now remembering why I actually don't do a lot of these videos because it is extremely hard to uh, do makeup on camera. In fact, it's disgusting, revolting, vile, tragic. Just kidding, it's not that bad. So life update, you guys. I am in such a good place in my life right now. I feel so content with almost every area of my life, which is something that I don't really know I could have said at any point for the past, I don't know, five or six years. There's just always things I'm worrying about. And lately I'm so worry-free and happy. And I've been noticing that, you know, on Instagram and stuff, I'll get comments from you guys saying, Blair seems so much happier lately. Blair seems so much happier since moving to Texas. That's a big part of it, obviously. I'm really, really enjoying it out here. And life is just so fun lately. I feel like I'm more than anything just having fun. And by the way, there are some changes coming soon to this channel, my second channel. Um, I'm gonna be completely changing it and it's gonna be something completely different starting in about a month. So get ready for that. I was looking back at my first video ever the other day and thinking about how much my life has changed, not only as a direct result of being on YouTube, obviously, but also um, just life in general, all the changes I've been through, both physically, okay, that's the obvious one, but mentally, emotionally, I've just been aging, like I'm old. <laughs> Even my politics to a big extent have changed a lot over the years. Maybe that's what we should talk about. We should talk about how my politics have changed over the years, because at this point, I've been on YouTube for what? six years so if your politics don't change through multiple administrations and just over that you know amount of time in general something in the water ain't right oh and how i do my makeup has changed i only put makeup in the places where i want it now i used to be the person who's like doing like top of my head down to basically my tits full cake makeup and it's like mm, actually i just want makeup in the center of my face for highlighting and under my eyes and little on my forehead and that's it. I don't need to put makeup all the way back here, all the way down here, all the way up here for what? So yeah, what a different world when the Blair that I'm putting on the screen right now first popped up. First of all, people don't know this. I was only Blair for about two months before I started YouTube as in I had begun my transition very shortly before that and I had chosen the name Blair two months before I started my channel. So I have literally been growing up on the internet and public in the way that I am for the entirety that I have been Blair White. So I look back at those early videos and I just see such a child. <laughs> but yeah, my views I feel like have changed a lot. I feel like I've become much less of a binary thinker over time, which really should be the goal for everyone. I guess you could say I'm non-binary. She's coming out of the closet. So I can be like Gigi Gorgeous who had like 17 coming out videos. <laughs> Girl. I like you, Gigi, but you know that was whack. <laughs> the way in which I viewed politics at the start of my channel was very much from a, you know, limited government, anti-authoritarian, leave me the fuck alone because I have no inherent obligation to live my life the way in which you see fit, simply by virtue of being born on this particular plot of land at the particular time that I did type of perspective. And I still have that. That still reigns true. You know, since I was a child, I always had a very, very, and I cannot overstate this, strong aversion to authority since I was four or five years old. And I think that was fueled in large part by the fact that one of the first things I figured out about life and my environment and, you know, my existence in the somewhat backwards town I grew up in was that all the authority around me had no idea what the f they were doing. They were idiots and they had really, you know, the right to guide me simply by virtue of them being older and being adults in many ways, but they were also idiots who really didn't know a lot about life. And I knew that from the time I was very, very young. You know, you have to remember that I was being told from the very start of my life that my natural disposition as a feminine person was wrong. I was treated as though I was doing something bad or that, or that it was an action at all. You know, I remember thinking like, why are people acting like the way I'm walking and the way I'm talking and the pitch of my voice and my mannerisms are somehow 
an incorrect action when it's not really, you know, a set of actions at all. It's just my natural way of being. Like, what idiots? What a joke. These people are stupid. <laughs> like, I had these thoughts about all the adults around me, whether it was my kindergarten teacher or my parent. Like, I was like, wow, everyone's so dumb. So to bring it back to politics, I believe that really shaped my worldview. You know, the idea that the government doesn't have my self-interest in mind at all and doesn't know nor care what's best for me. You know, for better or for worse, I'm very much a go-it-alone type of bitch and that includes the government. Get out of my way and let me live my life. Stay as far out of my life as possible. So naturally, as I got older, it's like, okay, that makes me really like center right because I have some liberal social views, right? But you know, that's also still being trapped into a somewhat false dichotomy that if you're not left, you're right. But I guess the main way in which I've evolved over the past two years in particular is that even though I see far leftism as a greater of two evils in many ways, I feel like I'm looking kind of above that dichotomy lately and kind of looking at like, okay, so who is the real enemy? And I'm really not trying to speak like a centrist right here because I don't view myself as a centrist at all. What I do see myself as someone who's coming to realize that there are much bigger forces that are outside of the left-right dichotomy that are enacting oppression on people that really are far more deserving of my attention and contempt and criticism. And they're not necessarily partisan. To name a few, the World Economic Forum, the corporate media, politicians of really every political persuasion, Big Pharma, Big Tech, the UN in many ways, and how all these entities are just one huge conglomerate and work together to oppress the average human being that exists on this planet. To quote George Carlin, it's a big party and you ain't invited, sister. You know, I'm really just rambling at this point and I hope you guys are following. <laughs> so to kind of package it in a simple way, I feel like where the old me may have looked at certain societal problems and said, oh God, this is the left and you know, this is all their fault. I kind of have learned to translate these topics and say, um, actually there's no one here to save us because exactly what right-wing politicians am I supposed to look to as, you know, the saving grace of all the problems that we're having. So I'm really on some like, oh, all of you guys are the enemy type shit rather than just like these are my enemies and these are my allies i don't feel like i really have allies do i still have more of a bias against left-wing politicians most likely for sure but you know that's also gonna only be the natural consequence of me living in the ultimate leftist experiment which is los angeles a blue city in a blue state and seeing where those policies end up and seeing how much better life is here in texas and you know even in a blue city and in a red state like Gotta have some balance. I feel like I used to have a lot more of a blind allegiance to cops than I do now, which looking back on feels silly because, you know, over the past two years especially, I feel like I've been able to really see that really the single barrier that exists between freedom and tyranny are cops. You know, what is an unconstitutional law? What is an oppressive action by the state if not carried out by cops you know during covid you see cops busting into homes and like arresting like old people who are trying to play bingo you see 12 year olds being dragged out of restaurants by cops because they don't have a vax card and it's like all of these crazy things would literally just be words on a piece of paper if not a cop willing to enter a building or enter a space with a gun and enforce it and so the idea that we've seen no cap no cops in mass stand against so much of the tyranny that's existed for the past two years it's kind of maybe be like oh you know maybe i don't have this blind allegiance to cops that i really thought i did and maybe it's for the better you know i also very much have come to look at the corporate media as much more of my enemy than even the most radical of left-wing politicians and lawmakers and what really woke me up to that was you know living in california during covid and seeing so many ass backwards irrational non-effective policies that were you know enacted under covid and as a reason and at first i was just so frustrated with like newsom and mayor garcetti in la and these left-wing dictators that came out of covid and then i realized of course they're making these policies the corporate media is holding them by their neck to make them. If they don't enact lockdowns, if they don't enact vax passports, if they don't enact social distancing rules that make no sense, they're gonna get reamed in the media, they're gonna have their life destroyed as a result of it, and they're not gonna win a re-election. So then you look, okay, there's the media, and they're the puppeteers controlling the politicians, saying through their actions, basically, uh, lock your state and lock your cities down or be canceled and be called a grandma killer. So, you know, of course they're going to do it and it doesn't make them any less of a coward for, you know, falling to that and their obligation should be to the people, not positive press coverage, but it is what it is. So then I'm like, okay, so the politicians are down here, the media is up here controlling them, who's controlling the media? 
And that is some shit that leads you to some scary answers. So I guess you could say I'm just more pro-freedom than ever. It's really scary. And the past two years have been like a nightmare for someone like me who has been so anti-authority my entire life. So yeah, like I don't know what people want to make of that long ass rant I just did. Like, I don't think that means I'm jumping to a new label. I don't think that means I'm jumping to like, this is what I used to believe and now I believe this. It's more so like, I've really expanded my understanding of the things I already believed. And I believe them to more of an extent than ever in a lot of ways. And I've directed my anger to different places, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's just like where I'm at with it. <laughs> Let me do some setting spray. And now my makeup is officially done. Hope you guys didn't like hate this mindless, endless rant that I did while beating my face. Keep an eye out on this channel for some changes coming and I'll also be posting on my main channel in a couple days. So I will see you guys soon. I love you. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.